Question 3 says a slingshot consists of a light leather cup containing a stone. The cup is pulled back against two parallel rubber bands. It takes 15 newtons to stretch either one of these bands one centimeter. So A, what is the potential energy stored in two bands together with a 44 gram stone placed in the cup and pulled back 0.11 meters from the equilibrium position? And B, at what speed does the stone leave the slingshot? So I feel like the best way to do this is to start with writing down some of the things we know. We know that the, the distance that you can pull this thing back is, uh, is one centimeter, so one centimeter, and it will give you a force, of, a force of equal to 15 newtons. That's for one band. And so if we know that the force is equal to uh, negative k delta x, then we could say that, that negative k is equal to the force divided by the change of the x. That's a horrible x, but that's, that's an x. Well, since force is in newtons, which uh, newtons are measured in kilograms times meters per second squared, so we need to have our units need to, to match up with kilograms, meters, and seconds. And so the change of x, instead of being in centimeters, it needs to be it needs to be in meters, so one centimeter is equal to 0 0.01 meters. And so we could say that the force for one, for one of these things, the, the value of k, we'll just make it positive k, the value of k is equal to 15 divided by 0 0.01. And so k is equal to 1500 newtons per meter. Now, if each one of these bands, so there's, there's a band for this side and there's a band for this side, if each one of these bands um, creates the same amount of force for each meter that it's moved, then we can multiply this by 2. So, so k of both bands is equal to 1,500 times 2. Or we could just say 3,000 newtons per meter. Now, the question in part A asks us, if we have a change of x, if we have a change of x that is 0 0.11 meters, what is going to be the potential energy stored in two bands? And so we know that the potential energy for a spring is equal to 1 half k times delta x squared. And so we could say that the potential energy is equal to 1 half times... 3,000 times 0 0.11 squared. And so the potential energy is equal to 18.15 joules. And then in part A, it, it tells you the, that the mass of the stone is 44 grams, and you actually don't need that for part A. You need it for part B. Part B says, with what speed does the stone leave the slingshot? And so we have to use our, our conservation of energy because... This potential energy is a conservative force. We can use conservation of energy, and we can say that the kinetic energy plus the potential energy initially is going to be equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy uh, in the final state, so finally. Well, we know that initially this thing isn't moving at all. It's just, um, it's just potential energy, so the kinetic, kinetic energy is zero. And then in the final state, we know that the potential energy is all used up, so the, the potential energy is zero. So we know that the potential energy initially is equal to the kinetic energy in the final state. And so we can set up an equation for the kinetic energy. So uh, kinetic energy is equal to one-half of the mass times the velocity squared. And so we know that the kinetic energy equals the potential energy. So one half of the mass times the velocity squared is going to be equal to 18.15 joules, 18.15. So then from this point, we would just solve for the velocity. And so if we say that one half times the mass times the velocity squared is equal to the kinetic energy final, and that's also equal to the potential energy initial, and that's also equal to 18.15 joules, as we just calculated. We can sit here and we can solve for the, vo the velocity. So the velocity squared is equal to, to kinetic energy final divided by 1 half m. 
and so one half m we can we can flip this over and we could say that it's uh, two times the kinetic energy final divided by the mass is equal to the velocity squared and so the velocity is equal to the square root of two times the kinetic energy divided by the mass at this point we can just substitute everything so the velocity is equal to the square root of two times eighteen point one five divided by the the mass, which it said was 44 grams, so 44 grams is equal to 0 0.044 kilograms, so 0 0.044, and you should get that from plugging that in your calculator, you should get 28.72281 meters per second.